Yeah, this car's gonna be dangerous. Come on, you Oh, God. We've built a weapon that we're not necessarily <laughs> capable of handling. <laughs> $8,000 junkyard V8 engine swap versus $30,000 crate V8 engine swap. Does more expensive mean more better? Let's find out. Be back. Three years ago, we bought two nearly identical Nissan 350Zs. Then we modified them to be fun daily drivers that you could take to the track. Things went well until they didn't. One Z got expensive parts. And the other Z got mm -hmm. cheap parts. Then we tested to see which components are worth spending your hard earned money on. After 16 videos of comparing almost everything from tires to turbos, we brought both fully modified Zs to the track for an epic final showdown. And they both exploded. Uh oh, low car bro. So we're gonna do what every smart person does. We're gonna put V8s in them. And the goal is by the end of this project, both cars will have more power and be more reliable. At least that's what we hope. Just let me die. Hi car will be getting a brand new 6.2 liter Chevy LS3 525. Plus we've got about $10,000 of additional parts and accessories sitting in boxes back there. But we'll talk about that stuff later. This engine is the cat's pajamas. <laughs> Low Team, on the other hand, is getting a used six liter Chevy LQ9 pulled out of a truck from a scrapyard. I think this is us. This one? Yeah, that's us. Oh, all right. Contrary to High Team's aluminum block, this is an iron block. Uh, it's heavier, it's got yeah. smaller pistons, yeah. less compression, makes less power, but with the modifications that we have planned, we should be good for around 400 horsepower. It's pathetic. We also have about $5,000 worth of parts to make this Chevy engine work in a Nissan. We're gonna get these V8s installed, dyno them, and take them to the track to see who makes a mobile, baby. <laughs> well, before we put these guys in, we gotta take our broken motors out. I forgot. That we had to do that. <laughs> Dude, this car is sick. It's been over a year since we've driven these things. I forgot all the cool stuff that we put on them. And I'm really, really excited to drive this thing eventually. We got right to work, but before the old engines could come out, we had to get rid of all the stuff around them. Battery, AC pump, radiator, wiring, we had to drain the oil out of them. It was a lot to get through, but before we knew it, our engine was coming out and we were pulling ahead of high team. Yes, turns out their fancy turbos are causing some major issues. I was not gonna let Nolan outdo us, so I told Zach to step on it, and he got our engine out pretty quick too. Respectfully, Nolan, you suck. We got a brand new motor, a bunch of brand new cool parts to bolt onto it. Everything's clean. Even though our engine was fully assembled, there were still a few things we had to swap out to make it fit in a Nissan, such as our oil pan. Always use the smallest ratchet possible. That's real mechanic stuff. Oil pan officially on. Ooh. <laughs> Meanwhile, before we go on bolting accessories, we have to give this thing a little bit of a tear down, give it a once over, make sure that everything's good because after all, this thing did come off of a truck. Ooh, we got a crack on one of our coils here. The coil itself? Yep. Oh, f dude, that is really bad. So we're gonna have to replace that. Otherwise, we're just asking to get screwed. Ready to go. Motor to go. Nice. Now let's see what this thing looks like. You guys ready? Oh. Huh. Looks like a clapped out LS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wow. smells like a bad fish restaurant. Did I do an LS noise? <laughs> <laughs> We're going V8, baby. Gotta have some headers. And those are nice. Yeah, those are really nice, to be honest. Dude, this thing's sick. <laughs> I know. Look at it for a sec. Stand and gaze upon its glory. It looks like a grill that middle-aged dads buy. We've got our sicky billet engine mounts. 
They put the engine as far back and down as possible for the best weight distribution and center of gravity. So that means that the engine mounts themselves are pretty far forward on the engine. And that is unfortunately a huge problem for our air conditioning. The compressor just runs right into the engine mount. And by a lot, I can't just shave some off the engine mount. I can't just shave some off the compressor. It just does not fit. So unless there's a smaller compressor or a different setup altogether that we can buy, it's gonna be a hot boy summer. Now that Aaron has done a lot of work cleaning this thing up, giving it a once over, we know that it's good. And now we can tackle our big performance upgrade. We're gonna put a new cam in there. With this camshaft, it's gonna increase the power, but also hopefully make it sound a lot cooler too. Our Junkyard LS came with a pretty clapped out and high mileage valve train. In order to take advantage of our new cam and the power that's gonna be delivered, we would also like to upgrade our springs and retainers to be able to handle the sustained RPM during drifting. Just like that, all installed. Now the heads can go back on the motor. I'm glad I don't have to do any of that. So with the LS heads, there's a very specific sequence that you have to hit while torquing the head bolts, not with pounds, but with degrees of motion, which will break out a torque angle meter to do that with. Feels like it's gonna fall off. Yeah. That is tense. <laughs> Careful, SpongeBob. Careful, SpongeBob. Careful, SpongeBob. <laughs> Meanwhile. Okay, we've got most of our fancy new parts bolted to our fancy new engine, and now it's time to unbox one of our biggest fancy new parts. Yeah, so Low Team is reusing the CD09, which came stock in the 350Z, but that's like kind of boring. And poor. And poor, more importantly. So we got a brand spanking new Tremec T56 Magnum six-speed transmission that's gonna fit perfectly on our Crate LS3. That's just a little guy. He's really little. It's way smaller than the 350Z trans. It might be small, but it's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Those are good noises. That's a nice noise. Now we're gonna look at this uh, little twin disc setup we got here. A twin disc clutch is basically what it sounds like. There's two discs. A normal clutch, you may know, has one disc, one friction disc. For any one disc and clamp load with the clutch, you can you know, hold a certain amount of power, a certain amount of torque. The higher you go, generally speaking, the clutch has to get stiffer. But when you add a second disc, you kind of divide that whole load over two discs. You can hold a bunch of power, but it still drives pretty nice. Oil pan officially on. O P O. Thanks, James. Oh. <laughs> Headers are on the engine. That's very exciting. We're nearing the end of our engine build here, and I'm getting real antsy. I think our headers are gonna sound I think really headers sick. Are, um, I think our headers I are gonna think sound our are good. really sick. Better than high cars, certainly. I think high car is gonna just fall apart like a big pile of Looks all right. They're about the same shade. They're almost the same shade. There's some texture, okay? <laughs> I'm hoping that the heat from the engine maybe like melts the paint a little bit. Despite us lagging behind high team, things were going pretty well which means it was time for things to not be going pretty well. All right, here we got our knockoff sort of throttle body. As you'll see, it clears the adapter quite nicely, but now it's getting hung up and hits the intake itself. So uh, we're gonna have to spend more money and get the parts that actually work instead of hoping that this universal throttle body would. Very frustrating, but also kind of embarrassing. We're gonna have to reevaluate our game plan and uh, come back with a fresh mind and fresh parts. Now, I want to make fun of Nolan. I do. It's like my favorite thing. But we weren't having the easiest time either. Okay, we got the, uh, the old transmission stuck to the engine, and it was super easy. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay, oh, yo, yo. Yeah. Oh, God almighty. All right, James, reverse hump us. <laughs> <laughs> but we got it done, and uh, now this is almost ready to go in the car. 
after taking some real rudimentary tape measure type of measurements, I'm a little bit concerned about how well this thing's gonna fit. Now, like we've said, it's really cool that the Siki engine mounts move the engine transmission far back for good weight distribution, but I think it's gonna probably run into some things. Whoa! Let's be very careful with our wiring harness. Okay, keep going. That's all she's got. It looks like there's this whole hump just needs to be smashed in. So we'll get the old uh, sledgehammer out. We use only the finest instrumentation for a precise finish. It's very uh, tight. Bash, gotta bash more. Meanwhile, Low Team was still stuck doing Low Team things. We uh, did encounter one big problem here. This is an exhaust bolt that has been broken off in the cylinder head. It came like this. Someone wrenched too hard and broke the head off, so now we have to extract it, and I'm not looking forward to it. Okay, it's going in. Oh! Broke the tool? Dude, that was like barely anything. Yeah. That was not your fault. That was not even that much. That was like nothing. That's that was like call. that was like allergy. that was not that was not. It's day 100 of putting the uh, LS engines in the Z's, trying to get the motor fitted today or tomorrow at the latest. Because on Friday the car goes out to get its custom exhaust fitted, and the engine has to be in it. Also, if we don't get this motor in, my wife's gonna leave me. Okay, I'm gonna bump it down, try to line them up. Down here, everything's looking pretty good. We've got clearance at the top of the tunnel. There's just one spot here on the left side where we're making contact. We're planning on having the engine completely assembled and maybe the trans mounted up to it by the end of the day. Jerry and Justin are gonna work on the back while I finish up stuff at the front, so yeah. welcome to Low Team, boys. Yeah. Ooh. Good to be here. Woo. Woo. That was great. Very synchronous. <laughs> <laughs> Oil starts dumping out that thing. I was never here, man. <laughs> then keep it moving. Okay, header install. This is where you gotta be buff. You gotta be buff and hot. <sighs> what a workout. <sighs> Let's throw this thing back in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have headers on. Next step, I think, is to work on the uh, clutch side. Yep. Let's get lubed. Let's get lubed. I'll be the lube boy. All right, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> We're putting on this new flywheel here. It's specific to LS. Oh! Nice reflexes. Specific to LS to CD009 transmission applications. Hey, Jerry. Flying away. Probably gonna want to put this on first. The adapter plate. Oh, it doesn't slide on it? No. Jesus. <laughs> really? Jesus Christ. We almost had a day where we didn't have to take off anything. That's a good day. <sighs> Got it. Okay. That was only mildly <laughs> stressful. <laughs> okay, now which way does this plate go? Jerry, the website for this kit says, quote, with this kit, there's no need to modify your transmission. Mm -hmm. However, Jerry, it does require a small modification to the LS block for starter clearance. Ah, beautiful. And, yes. Okay, so this little tab right here, we got a chunk off. Ooh, spark on my belly. Coming down. Transmission mount going on. With that, the engine and transmission are bolted to this 350Z. That's really exciting to me. Especially when I look over it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a huge step, but it doesn't mean we're done. We still have a lot of little things left to do to get this thing running, but we'll get them done. Our engine's in our car. <clears throat> Haven't they suffered enough, James? <laughs> Never. <laughs> I'll burn their crops and salt the soil. <laughs> Okay, it's been a bit of a trying day over here at Low Team. We've got shifter issues, clutch issues, transmission issues. Not supposed to do that. Yeah, it's a, a little bitch right here. This bearing, it was going in a little bit hard, even when it's lubed up. Uh, so we're gonna use a little trick. I'm gonna put this in dry ice, cool this part down. When it cools, the metal actually shrinks. 
You can hear it screaming. Hear that? That's the metal shrinking. That's the sound I make when I shrink. And then we'll heat the uh, lock side. That is going to make it a little bit bigger. So this should be able to just slide back in. And then once the temperature is normalized, there'll be a nice fitting. There you go. Flush as a, as a mush. We used a little bit of science, <laughs> intuition, uh -huh. persistence. Yeah, most we can get of, anything done that. with persistence and dedication. That's the whole theme of the show, Jerry. There's nothing we can't do. I know. We go to the moon, I've Nolan. I've done it three times. We can, you've been <laughs> to the moon three times? No, I've done this show three times. <laughs> Clutch and flywheel are torqued on. In theory, the stock transmission should bolt up perfectly to this Chevrolet LS. In theory, we'll have a great time, but uh, let's see how that hypothesis works out. I now bless this engine. Spirit on Sante. Unde nome de Padre, unde sonne, unde Amen. Jimmy, give me a little pump. Stay on target. Stay on target. Stay on target. Oh, come on, you. So close, man. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Now we're out. We're out. Let's just see what it's hitting on. Got to clearance this uh, hump with the uh, grinding disc. It's a little riskier this time because there is an indent on the other side, and I don't know how thick it is. So everybody, uh, cover your eyes. One, two, three. Put it under there. Right there. All right, push her in. Oh, there we go. Yep. yep. All right, transmission is mated to the engine, finally, after days of turmoil and self-doubt. Good morning! Good morning! What do you want? <laughs> Today we're looking to button up a bunch of little stuff. Trying to put the oil filter somewhere easy to access, but that isn't going to get bashed if we wreck this Crap. thing. Yeah. The oil filter that we've chosen is a beautiful piece by K&N, official performance filter of NASCAR. That's not bad. Good place to put it out of the way. We shouldn't hit it for the most part. And check this out. Super easy for oil changes. I don't think we have ever had this car running for long enough to change the oil. Unfortunately, that's true. We're making some extra room under the car by removing the exhaust and the drive shaft. Hell yeah. It's a boy. <laughs> First test fitting of the process. Very exciting. Go ahead, push her forward. All right, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let's go up a little more. Mmm, just oil pouring out oh, that yeah. thing. That yeah. is goop city. Did you guys not drain that? Or is that just... No. No, we did not. Stopping. We did not do that. <laughs> if oil starts dumping out that thing, I was never here, man. Okay. What if we went even higher up at a steeper angle and then went whoop? It's too high. It's too steep. We gotta go steeper. Angles. Geometry was actually the only math that I was decent at. Everything else, as you've probably seen through the course of this show, uh, I was terrible at. No one was really good at these classes. Geometry, recess. <laughs> Shaping metal is my passion. <laughs> I speak to the metal. The metal is like my child. The beauty is hiding in the metal <laughs> and it wants to be set free. <laughs> nice. That looks beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Jeez, that looks so dangerous. <laughs> if you left that in your pocket and went through a TSA checkpoint, they would pull you into a separate Dude, room. What are you talking about? <laughs> this, is, this is OE quality. It only took me like an hour and a half. Dude, James, these glasses are dirty as f and I can see the shards from me. <laughs> Nolan beat the firewall a little bit to give us some space with the pull packs. The motor sits perfect on there. We're clearing the oil pan. We're clearing the hard lines for the power steering. So far, so good. Real mechanic stuff right here. There's no way this goes in with that, right? So tight, dude. High team having the same problem we're having to try to fit the driver's side header. No, nah, that doesn't want to go. Now you're hitting the firewall. For fuck's sake. You know what I'm going to say. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Pull the motor out. <laughs> That's right. We had to pull the motor 
back out. It's been a very long day over here at Low Team. Got the drivetrain and headers all in the car. Compared to High Team, I think it's a tie game right now. Mm. <laughs> Just roll with in, it, Jerry. In theory. In theory. Over here on High Team, we're getting a full custom exhaust. The car's getting picked up today, getting towed over to a shop, and having a cool exhaust made for it. High Car's out getting their custom fancy exhaust, so we figured we would take their old exhaust, this old Tome kit uh, made of titanium. It's super light. It's kind of insane how light it is. This thing's gonna sound amazing with a V8 engine. Or sound like trash. We'll see. We have the oil filter relocation kit we need to install. We need to reinstall the power steering. We need to put the plug wires in, the wiring harness, a bunch of other shit that I'm probably forgetting. <laughs> Map sensor, lots of sensors. From what I can see, this is a high quality harness here. Everything's labeled, which is really great. It's just a matter of finding the correct connections and plugging them in, really. For something so cheap, it uh, installed very well, like Bionicle. It went together yeah. like, a, like a first wave Bionicle, you know, Tahu, mm -hmm. Kopaka. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. If you like the Bionicle movie, <laughs> like and subscribe. We have with us today our shop foreman, Mr. Adam Knapik. Fresh from FD Orlando. You might have seen his car. So we're planning out our intake. High Team has a very nice air intake that they know will fit in their engine. They also have a lot of clearance because they have a low mounted alternator and their accessories are very low profile. We're using a truck motor, so our alternator is high up and our accessories are in the way everywhere we go. It's gonna be a big pain in the butt to get this to work. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to make some sacrifices, but we cut some costs, so. It's gonna be unique too, so that is one benefit. That's probably the only benefit. <laughs> Our intake system consists of this elbow coupler, this mass airflow sensor, and this k and air filter right here. And it's gotta all go together in a piece of way that lets this car breathe. Adam's gotta do some chopping on the couplers to shrink everything down and make sure it fits in the compact space that we have in our engine bay. But in theory, once Adam gets this intake together, our car should be able to run. There's that word again. <laughs> Huge thanks to K&N for sponsoring today's video. Not only is K&N giving us unlimited performance with this engine swap, they're also giving you $50 off all premium air intakes from June 15th to July 26th. From cars, trucks, to SUVs, K&N gets you running cleaner, going faster, and driving further. With an air intake like this, you're gonna get elevated performance, a guaranteed horsepower increase, and improved engine sound. K&N is the best when it comes to automotive filtration, and if you're seeking performance unlimited for your vehicle, get $50 on intakes from June 15th to July 26th by going to knfilters.com slash donut, or just click the link below. What is your thoughts on changing the intake design instead of out to the side over here, dealing with all these issues, fitment, mm -hmm. and just straight up, just, just doesn't mm -hmm. seem right. Or right. we could just run a straight pipe, 90 uh, degree down into there, right? Yeah. It would just be chugging. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, this opening right here, that should be a bunch of air for the filter, right? Yeah. I kind of like it. Like yeah. It. Oh my God, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just need to embrace the Mad Max of it now. After putting the hood on, we realized that the two pieces don't play well together. So we're gonna have to modify the hood to clear the new intake that we built. I think it's gonna look really dope. It's also gonna look stupid. The carbon splinters are extremely sharp and will stick in your skin as well as your lungs. So always gear up when you cut this stuff. You don't wanna mess around. It's serious. All right, I hope this clears. Hey, we have a ways to go still. <laughs> I think the, you're getting hung up on the alternator. Yes, we are. Should we just clear a little rectangle for it, or what? No, you want it to be clean. You want, yeah, it, to be... You want it to be clean. Chip Foose versus Monster yeah. Garage. Yeah. <laughs> please work. Oh, there it is. The hood goes down. Uh, sort of. But you know what? That's going to be a job for another day.
My car is officially back from the exhaust shop and we got a cool exhaust. Now we got to get the engine running so we can put that thing to use. It's going to be loud. We got a few things left to do, fuel, some wiring stuff, but we're getting close. We lost four days work time and in that time, Low Team did some catching up. I'd say we're definitely behind them now in the race of it, but my back feels great. I'm barely awake right now. <laughs> It's day, I don't even know, of the engine swap. God damn it. This drill's too big. Space is tiny. This sucks. I just can't get the angle right for the throttle cable. You, you hear it, right? It just feels really bad. Oh. <sighs> Nissan. Are you okay, no one? Yeah, I'm fine. I was definitely not okay. As I'd feared, our wiring harness was not as plug and play as we'd hoped. I'd hit a wall. I couldn't figure it out. But luckily, like an angel from the clouds, Adam reappeared to lend a helping hand. So now we got everything wired up, we should be able to turn it over and see if we get this thing started. My hopes are high. The team, not so much. I'll prove them wrong. Adam just said we'd be firing this thing out in 15 minutes, so... <laughs> it's been weeks since we tore the engine out, so I really, really hope that we did everything correctly because that was a lot of work. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Sure, Nolan got his car started before us. Uh, big deal. It's basically been three on one because I don't really do anything around here except make jokes. Now that we've got the motor fired and we're on the home stretch here, it just kind of made me reflect on the challenge of this, but also the fact that I was able to do it with a lot of support, obviously. Like many other projects on this car, it's my first time doing this. And every time we complete a huge task on this car, it just makes me that much more confident. And, you know, if I can do it, you certainly can too. It just takes persistence. It's like, okay, we didn't get it right the first time. Let's take it back off, make some adjustments, put it back on, maybe it'll work this time. And, you know, maybe that'll take four or five times, but then you'll get it. Yeah, and you can only mess it up so bad. Yeah, and before you have to get a new <laughs> part. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Moment of truth. Time to fire this thing up for the first time. After all of us, <laughs> Put in all of this work. Go for it. Gonna fire right up. Time to shut down the channel. <laughs> <laughs> this is why cars suck. Yes. It's just voodoo. You don't even know what's happening yeah. in there. Everybody ready? Lovely. All right. Plenty of oil pressure. Engine runs. It's got oil pressure. And then we're going to go to the dyno. I make big power, baby. Big power. And then we're going to go to the drag strip and beat Nolan at his childhood hobby. I can't wait to kick High Car's ass. Both engines were in, but still needed to be tuned. So we hopped on the freeway and headed a breezy 92 miles to the only dyno that we could find last minute. All right, we just got the Z's here to kill her tune uh, up at Willow Springs and we're ready to get them dynoed. After all that work, we were really excited to see what kind of power we were putting down. This was really the first time we heard these things at full throttle. They sounded good. Low car put down an impressive 392 horsepower. And high car pulled a whopping 430 horsepower, which is less than we expected, but more than low car, which at the end of the day is all that matters. 
But dyno stats are just numbers. We had to find out what these things were actually like to drive. With both cars tuned and ready to go, we headed to the track. I feel kind of bad because Nolan is one of my good friends and I want all of my good friends to have a good day. You know, we're at the track, it's gonna be fun, but he's about to get his ass handed to him. This thing is gonna be a monster. Yeah, high team makes more horsepower, that's pretty undeniable, but they also spent $22,000 more than we did, so who's the asshole now? Yeah, this is the first time out in the new and improved high car. But uh, I already feel, ooh, might need to make a little more clearance. <laughs> here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Ooh. It sounds like a muscle car. Yeah, it sounds awesome. There we go. Sometimes you blow a hole in a power steering line, but fortunately your buddy has an entire box of random lines in his trunk. You know what you call that? Real mechanic stuff. Really excited about these shirts. I love the design. They're now available at donutmedia.com. Just get one if you want to look cool. Don't worry, dude. I got you. Real mechanic stuff. Jerry. <laughs> well, car sounds absolutely awesome, and it's 100% because we gave them our old exhaust. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it feels good. It still, it still feels like the same transmission, and this is a great transmission. I was expecting a lot more vibration from the motor, and it's really not that bad, especially for a race car. You expect it to be this level. Right. That intake sticking out of the hood looks bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a rhinoceros or a Nardwall. Now that we've shaken our own cars down a little bit, we're gonna switch, hop in each other's cars, and compare and contrast for the first time ever. Can't believe I'm saying it. I might be a little bit excited to experience low car. Sounds amazing. It just feels awesome. And it's like I'm not fighting the car, it's like we're working together. With my car, it feels like I'm fighting it, like I'm trying to make it do something it doesn't want to do. Dirt drop. Come on, Job. I missed the clutch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no one. So we've all driven both cars on track and we're still gonna drag race them to see which one's faster because that's what's most important. Mm -hmm. But Zach. Yeah? Nolan. Yeah? Does more expensive mean more better? Yeah, no. I'm really not so sure. I don't think so. I don't think so, guys. Low car feels great. It's got loads of torque everywhere you need it. it slides around awesomely. For somebody who just wants to go out on the weekends and do some sliding and rip around, what a setup. 
But being in high car, you know, it, de it does feel like a more refined engine, I think. Yeah. You can definitely feel the money in it. Yeah. It feels smooth. The power delivery is very smooth. The transmission. transmission is nuts. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't feel like high car wants to bring the rear end out like it should. Mm -hmm. I mean, if low car can do it, then this guy should be able to do it. Performance aside, I still think high car looks better. Uh, oh, no question. No question. Hands your, down, boys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> your intake manifold clearance uh, issue with your hood, Thank the you. fact that you have to have the big elephant nose yep. coming out, that's kind of a joke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a cool joke. Yeah. <laughs> I still think that I would have to go with an $8,000 swap than a $30,000 swap. Yeah. I mean, this thing is about as fun as you can get. This is all just fine and dandy, but we live our lives one quarter mile at a time. We don't have a quarter mile. We don't have an eighth mile. We have the front straight of a go-kart track. <laughs> so let's go see which one of these things goes zero to 60 fastest. Zero to 60, fastest time wins. Three, two, one. What was it? Okay, our onboard equipment said we hit zero to 60 in 5.19 seconds. For reference, that's a half a second faster than a stock 350Z. Oh. It's decent, but frankly, I wanted more. It looks like it's moving pretty quick. Hopefully we can beat it. Otherwise, the car goes in the trash. He did three one hundredths better. 5.16, zero to 60. Hell yeah. Okay, with the beans. <laughs> Looked fast, sounds good. 5.12 seconds. Not as fast as I thought it was gonna be, but I think that comes down to driver error, kind of feathering the clutch and all that, but still pretty quick. Pulled over a G, dude. 1.06 max G force. That's pretty sick, too. All right, Joe, but thousands of dollars are on the line here. Sure. Can a 525 horsepower V8 beat a scrapyard LQ9? Can't wait. I'm shaking in my boots. All right, Joe, whenever you're ready. Cool. Yeah. That's for sure. It did look very cool. So. Okay, I got a five two nine with a pretty bad start. If he uh, gets a launch with minimal tire smoke, I think he could easily be a smoke low card. Yeah. yeah. That looked pretty good. Yeah. You know what that was? Tidy. Yeah, it was very yeah. tidy. That was five point three three. Wow. Nolan, dude. Dude. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, team low. Okay, this is it. This is the final run of the day. Job's got to beat 5.1 seconds or else his car sucks. So, <laughs> yeah. all right, Job, let her rip. Oh, 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 no way. You hate to see it. Sounds all right. good. I can tell from that that his car sucks. <laughs> all right, Nolan. Yes. I have the time. Yes. Five point. Three, three. Yeah! Right. Yes! We beat my team with a lot less money. That's awesome. Job, I'm sorry. Yeah, that whatever. That sucks, dude. That's, that's, Thank that's you so much for watching this video and everything else on Donut. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell so you don't miss anything. Make sure to check in next week, same time, because we are putting angle kits on these things. And we're going to see if we can beat Low Car in some skids. All right. Go, go, go hang out with your friends.